really, really important that these libraries, the library costs £108,000 a year to run it. Lewisham's Labour Council spends £6.5 million a year on consultants' fees. So if we just stop the consultancy fees, all of these libraries could survive and all the staff that run these libraries would survive. Boys and girls, are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. I'm here in order to tell you what you need according to my interests as representative of New Cross Library's possible non-future. I work where I grew some fairy tales for the think tank Policy Excess, which has been lauded as the most influential think tank today in continuing to shape a complete contempt for anyone who hasn't been educated at Eton. Our vision is that library services can be rationalised and made profitable for us through enabling you to volunteer your livelihoods, i.e. redundancy thereby allowing the library to be housed in other local businesses per an ethos of outreach. If some of these companies to which our government has sold off most of our democratic process, such as the Department of Work and Pensions, the Health Service and the Education Service, will pay back the wasted, pretending to do things like setting up a central spine for the NHS, for example, which they haven't actually done, there will be no need for any of these libraries in South London to be closed at all. Indeed, if you refer to this table, this one, uh, showing the salaries of some of the most significant puppets in the council, you can see quite clearly why even more taxpayers' money must be wasted on think tanks and filling room beliefs you had in the usefulness of having councils at all, is summed up very neatly in uh, an illustrious councillor's recent speech. To quote, to the public I say this, we are not the resistance that our community needs as we are bound by rules, regulations and law. Democracy does not end and begin with elected politicians, but within the heart and soul of every member of the community. Hear, hear! Indeed, when we at Policy Excess hear words such as these, we wring our hands in joy, knowing our vision for the public will not be called to account by any kind of truly democratic process. Community libraries and further education are obviously both incredibly important for any type of society, but currently they are not doing what we at the core of government ideology want. That is, they are not allowing private wealth to run totally rampant. I, as an ordinary person, feel aggrieved at the way um, the political messages um, we're, that we live amongst um, are unremittingly pessimistic. So please now turn to this easy to understand flowchart showing how privatisation and the cut will work together to allow for the vision we have for our big society. So, private-public partnerships work like this. Cuts by central government, no resistance from county councillors, private interests move in, public services squeezed to the point that we no longer provide for those who cannot pay, councillors remain well paid, consulting groups profit, communities subsidise more and more the loss of what is rightfully theirs, while the rich walk away richer. Anyway, thank you so much for being here today, and as has been repeatedly stated by David Cameron, we support the right to protest, especially if it is done quietly and to no effect. So, <laughs> I would wish by I would finish by cautioning you not to make too much of a spectacle of yourselves. <laughs>